Welcome to the study of God's Word with Pastor Michael Pedrin. Let us pray for God to lead us in the study. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with us throughout the study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor Michael, what does Apostle Paul mean when he wrote in Romans chapter 6, verse 14? For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So, are Christians not obliged to, the, to obey the law, being under grace? That is a good question, Mark, that most of the Christians ask. Unfortunately, many have not understood it right. Always when we study the Word of God, the immediate context and the broader context of the Scripture must be looked into. If not, one is bound to misinterpret Scripture. Before we look at the context of what Paul said and the meaning of the phrase, we need to first define what that phrase under the law means. In the Bible, the phrase under the law could mean one of the two things. Under the condemnation of the law, because we are all guilty of transgressing it. And number two, under the jurisdiction of the law, because we all come under its territory. The Apostle Paul employed this phrase under the law for both these purposes. We will first look at the meaning under the condemnation of the law. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 3 and verse 19, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. You can see in this text the phrase, under the law means we are guilty before God. What are we guilty of before God? We are guilty of transgressing the law. Therefore, we are under the law. A few verses before this, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 19, Paul said that the whole world is also under something. Romans 3 and verse 19 says, For we have proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So under the law, in this context is all under sin. Therefore all are guilty before God because sin brings guilt. How many people are under sin? In the same chapter, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, therefore all are under the law, pronounced guilty by it, and condemned to die, because Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. In the plan of salvation, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, came to deliver us from sin, guilt, and death by taking our sins on Calvary and dying the death that was us. Therefore, on Calvary, the condemnation of transgressing God's law was taken away by Jesus on those who believe in Him, and grace is given instead. Jesus dying for our sins is called the grace of God. The Apostle Paul said in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, He, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Therefore, a believer is not under the law or under the condemnation of the law, declared as guilty because Jesus paid the price. 
A believer in Jesus, therefore, is under grace instead. Remember, truth becomes error when it is stretched too far. Grace has been stretched by many Christians to mean something else, unfortunately, than what is intended by Scripture. Right in the first century, grace was under attack. Jude wrote in Jude 1 and verse 4, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. People were using the cover of grace for a wrong purpose. The Apostle Paul was quick to add in the very next verse after he said, we are not under law but under grace. He said what grace would not do. In Romans 6, and verse 15 we read, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Knowing very well, people would misinterpret God's grace as a license to sin. Paul quickly made his point that this is never the purpose of grace. So, what is the one thing grace would never do? Grace will not take us back to sin. Remember, how is sin defined in Scripture? 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4 says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So grace will never permit a believer to transgress God's law. On the contrary, grace will enable us to keep it. Paul continued in Romans 6 and verse 16. Knowing not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin or unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. We are all one of the two servants, servants of sin or servants of righteousness. If we continue to disobey God's law, we are in sin and we die. And we ultimately die because the wages of sin is death. But if we take the path of obedience unto righteousness, we shall live forever because the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is why the apostle concluded by saying in Romans 8 and verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What does it mean to walk after the Spirit? It means we walk in obedience to God's law by the help of the Holy Spirit. Paul clarifies it when he wrote in Romans 8 and verse 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. So the phrase of Romans 6 verse 14, for ye are not under the law but under grace, simply means you are not under the condemnation of the law for sinning because Jesus by taking our sins and paying its penalty has freed us from guilt and condemnation of the law when we truly believe in Jesus. But the grace of Jesus that covers us now leads us to obedience to the law and not the transgression of it. Now, what is the second meaning that we get from the Bible regarding the phrase under the law? It also means we are under the jurisdiction of the law. You can see this phrase is employed even in secular 
legal system. For example, let me quote the US legal system. Quote, the word under has a great variety of meanings. Under the law means subject to the law. We are under the laws of the United States, that is, we are subject to those laws. We live under a certain jurisdiction, that is, we are subject to it." End quote. Yes, every citizen of every country is under the law of their country, isn't that right? That is, they are bound to follow the laws that govern them. So also, believers are citizens of the heavenly kingdom, and we are under the law in the sense we are being under the obligation of obeying the law. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came as the Son of Man, and who was totally sinless, was also under the law in a different sense. Paul himself wrote elsewhere about Jesus who was under the law. Galatians 4 and verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. So, Jesus was also under the law according to this text. What does that mean? It means Jesus came under the jurisdiction of the law and fulfilled its requirements. Of Jesus, it was said in the Old Testament in Isaiah 42, 21, He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Yes, Jesus did exactly that. He said in his first great sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5, 17, Think not, I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ fulfilled the law in every detail, dear brothers and sisters. He said in John 15 and verse 10, I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Jesus wants us also to express our love to Him by doing likewise, by His grace and by His Spirit. He told us to express our love to Him by obedience. He said in John 15, John 14 verses 15 to 17, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. So a believer is not under the law, meaning we are not under the condemnation of the law, because Jesus' death on the cross, He took care of that. On the other hand, everyone, believer and unbeliever, are under the jurisdiction of the law, and we are obliged to follow its command. As we close, I want you to remember these phrases. As believers, we are no longer under the domination of the law, but we are under the dominion of the law. As believers, we are no longer under the judgment of the law, but we are under the jurisdiction of the law. As believers, we are no longer under the condemnation of the law, but we are in the circumference of the law. And Finally, we as believers are not under the law, but the law is inside us by the grace of God. Thank you, Pastor Pedrin, for explaining this puzzling passage in a clear and simple way. I hope 
dear listeners, you were blessed by this answer. Thank you and God bless.